Hello everybody, it's Gavin Syme, and today I'm going to talk about actions, installing, managing, using, all that good stuff. I'm a Lightroom lover, I do a lot of editing in Lightroom, but there's some times when I just need to go in and do something more because there's some things that you just can't do in Lightroom, and when I have that special portrait or, or landscape I want to do that magic juju with to really get that final finished, finished look, that's when I go into Photoshop. And using actions in Photoshop is a way to save a ton of time. There's no way I'd remember all the effects that I know that are in actions and they also take way longer which would mean I would use less so I get more creativity and a good action allows you to have so much control obviously today I'll be working with my actions and I'm gonna go through this pretty quickly because I've got to keep this video fairly short but you can always go back and rewatch it so up here in window going to the actions it's already checked I have the actions palette already loaded right over here but if you click that it would normally load up if it wasn't this little drop down over here learn where this is from right here, the Actions palette's empty right now. We can load Actions. Let's navigate to, here's some Actions here. Let's load Creative Essentials. I select it, navigate to it, select it, click Load. It's now in the Actions palette, just like a folder with a bunch of little files inside. Uh, another way to do it is you can actually go in and directly load it just by double-clicking an Action file. Here's Hollywood Effects 2. I double-click it. It opens right in Photoshop in the Actions palette. So real quick, uh, to explain this, when you load actions in Photoshop, they are in here, and if you quit Photoshop, most of the time they'll stay in there. A lot of times, if, if you were to make an action and then Photoshop crashed it and didn't shut down properly, a lot of times it'll lose the actions. You want to make sure you're, you have your original action files and that if you make changes or make a new action, you save those files, and we're going to look at that too. So if I click on this, let's... Uh, first of all look at a really cool feature called button mode you can one way to run an action is just to select the action and go down here to play and you can play that action for workflow sake my favorite way click the drop down switch to button mode each action becomes a one click button and you can apply that effect so let's start by opening a photograph let's take a portrait here's a nice portrait of a bride and just going to do some skin softening. So it's, it's nice the way it is, but let's go ahead and run Porcelain Auto, which is from Hollywood Effects 2. And I just click the button. You see now that it's, it's running the stuff. It's making new layers down here in the Layers palette, which we'll get to in a minute. It's going to run the action, and boom, there it is. It's getting close so you can see it in the video. This particular action is a skin smoother, and it automatically detects eyes and hair and stuff like that, so you retain the detail in those, but it softens everything else. It's a new one. I'm pretty excited about it. But the bottom line is we're, we're not talking about so much specific actions here, but how to use any action that you're using. So you see now that the actions run, you could make a snapshot and you could switch back and forth between original and you could try different actions and experiment. What you really want to learn is the layers palette down here. In this case, and you'll see this with a lot of good actions, the effect and the original are separately, whether in a folder or a different layer or whatever it is you're doing. In this case, I have the effect on this smooth skin layer. And you see if I turn that layer off, that's the whole effect. The original's underneath. So I can control the intensity of this by just controlling opacity. I can turn it up or down or whatever I want. Uh, there's also a layer mask. If you're not familiar with them, you should probably do some more research, but we'll talk about them a little bit. Uh, layer mask is this little white thing right next to this. Um, you can put a layer mask on pretty much any layer, and if it's, there's not one there, you can just go down to this button here and make a new layer mask. In this case, we already have one. Let's go to the brush tool using the B key, reset our swatches using the D key, and then you can switch back and forth. Most of the time you're using black or white. You could use grays and stuff too, but if you paint black on a white layer mask, it's going to effectively hide that part of the layer. So in this case, we're hiding the softening. If you switch back and paint white, it's bringing the softening right back in. Now you can control the opacity of your brush, so you can control how intensely you're, you're affecting the layer. The cool thing about masks is it's totally non-destructive. Unlike erasing a layer, you're just in here and you're painting on this layer and hiding the parts you want, you can bring them back, you can have total control over it, which is why a lot of my actions I use masks in in critical areas because it makes it really quick. So work with, with, work with the masks, paint on it with the brush tool, black will hide, white will bring it back, use your opacity, you know, adjust your layer as needed to get the effect you want. That's 100%, it's really soft. The default, I think, on this is 70, but you can just kind of dial it around to get exactly what you want. Sometimes you want a more intense effect. Sometimes it's great just to go mild so that people hardly even realize there's an effect there. But the bottom line is we very quickly made a great portrait here. Let's look at another one. Let's take, uh, let's take this, another wedding portrait. 
I've been doing a lot of weddings lately. And uh, here's a nice one. It could use a little magic. So let's go into, let's run Camelot. Camelot is another Hollywood effects to action. I'm just going to click it. We see that it's running. We see it's making new layers. This action's actually got some more complex layers. So when it's done, boom, there it is. On, off, on. This one, again, is a folder with a layer mask. So you can control the entire action with the mask. You can click here, expand that folder, and here's all the layers that are relative to that. So you could, you could, you know, work with the individual masks on each layers if you wanted to. You could turn certain things off. You can make adjustments. A lot of times on my actions inside the folder, if there is one, you know, or even if there's not a folder, individual layers, you can adjust opacity to increase the intensity, all kinds of good stuff. So again, just collapse this to make it simple. The folder controls the primary effect. I can dial it back using opacity and I can just the same click on the brush and I can paint things out. I could turn my opacity down to make it not quite so intense. Whatever I want to do. Let's say I wanted to bring some detail back into this dress, have it not quite so glory. And I'm just painting on the mask to hide it. And I can bring it right back if I wanted to. That mask is controlling everything inside, but you've also got masks on the individual layers inside if you need them. Most of the time you probably won't. But the best actions are going to have masks and layers and you can adjust opacity and stuff like that if, if it's an intense effect. You know, some actions are just real simple, straightforward stuff and you don't need layers. But a lot of times you're going to want to tweak it a little bit, uh, especially if it's a glow action or something like that. You might want to mask their eyes. Uh, the first one we looked at did an auto mask, but they don't all work that way. It just depends on the effect. So again, there you have it. Let's uh, go out of button mode for a minute. I'm going to show you another little trick that I use that makes things easier. Go out of button mode, and here's these actions. I'm going to go down to here, click this folder icon. I'm going to make a new set called Fave Actions. Now, as I told you, these are just loaded into Photoshop's memory. So if you delete these, you haven't deleted the original action file. You just removed them from the actions palette. If you make changes, you have to go back and save them. So let's say... I take all these actions. This is what I like to do is I'll make an actions set that's my favorites and I'll just drag all my favorite actions. So let's take Creative Essentials and Hollywood Effects and all that and drop them into the favorite actions folder that we just made. They're now in there. I'm just going to go up here and delete the folders for Hollywood Effects and Creative Essentials. Again, they're still here. If we go to the original files, they're still in there. We just removed them from Photoshop. I can go up here to this Fave Actions, click the drop down, go to Save Actions, go to the desktop, and I'm going to save my favorite actions. Now I have a new action set right here. I could move it to my other computers or do whatever I need. If Photoshop lost it, I could go back to the original. I just make a place on my hard drive where I store my favorite actions, and I can just click it, and it will open in Photoshop. And they're all in one nice tidy place. So that's a big time saver. I'm going to switch back to button mode real quick. Let's grab a new file. And there's all kinds of stuff. I mean, you can do batches with actions. You know, that's kind of things to get into in another tutorial. But there's tons of crazy stuff you can do, and it's really cool. There's a lot of neat stuff with actions. Uh, let's do, oh, let's say let the Orton effect. Here's uh, Orton Spice. Let's run this. Again, it's running all the, all, all the commands, making all the layers, and boom. The Orton effect's not for everything, but it can be kind of cool. And again, here's another one where I've got a folder that has all the layers. You can adjust them individually if you want, or you can just dial back and adjust the effect as a whole. Maybe I just want to subtly apply this, or maybe I want to make it super intense. But you get the idea. I got the masks, I got the control. It's all right there, and I can do whatever I need to with it. So the bottom line, you know, remember in your actions, remember the layers. Go down there and play with them. Button mode up here can save you a lot of time. If you make changes, make sure you save out a new action set and make sure you keep your actions nice and safe somewhere so if Photoshop crashes and you need to reload them, they're in there. And other than that, go out and you know work with some actions. They're, they can be pretty magical and you can do a lot of cool stuff. I love Lightroom and workflow tools, but Photoshop's still one of my workflow tools because I can go in and do stuff that is just really can't be done in in Lightroom. Sometimes I just want that magical stuff that I can do in Photoshop, especially for glows and smoothing skin and that kind of stuff. I still turn to Photoshop and actions save me a ton of time in doing that. So uh, hope it was helpful. Go out, find some actions, and uh, have some fun with it. Catch you later.